Today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. If you would like to support the show, head on over to audibletrial.com backslash TMP to get your free audiobook download and 30 day trial at audibletrial.com backslash TMP. There's over 180,000 titles to choose from. You can listen to them on your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or your MP3 player. Make sure you sign up on the computer so that we get credit. We get a kickback for everyone who signs up for a free trial at audibletrial.com backslash TMP. You are now listening to the Mythesis Podcast, your portal to the paranormal, streaming live at mythesis.me. Your hub for all things spiritual, esoteric, and paranormal. And now, your host, Truth Seeker. Hey, how's it going? This is your host, Truth Seeker. You're now tuned into The Awakening. I got on the line my co-host, Dano. How you doing, Dano? Excellent. Glad to be here. Doing good? Excited about tonight's show, man? Yeah, very, very, very excited. That's what's up, man. There's a lot of people looking forward to this show and a lot of, always a lot of controversy uh, about topics that we're going to be discussing tonight. But yeah, we're honored to have on the show tonight Jordan Maxwell. Are you there, Jordan? Yes, I am. It's good to have you, man. Well, thank you. Good to have you. There's a lot to talk about. Thanks so much for you know all the work that you're doing and that you've put in over the years. Tonight, I'm wanting to talk about what the scriptures refer to as the Maseroth. And I want to see if you can tell us a little bit of information about that and what that is according to the Holy Bible and according to the Zodiac in the scriptures. Yep. Well, uh, basically, the word uh, Maseroth is in the Old Testament book of Job. And incidentally, the book of Job in the Old Testament is the oldest book uh, it seems to be the oldest book in the Bible uh, in actual time when it was written. It was the very first one. So that's interesting, the fact that uh, Job is the very first book in age. It's the oldest. And so uh, in uh, the Old Testament, God says to his people many times, but in particular one time it says... Um, Go back to the old ways. Uh, that was interesting. The old ways. Go back uh, to do what the ancients did. Well, that was astral theology. What the ancients did. The old ways. And so, um, in the book of Job, the old way was uh, re- referred to as Mezarot. I think it's M A Z Z A R O T H, Maseroth, and that's in Job 38:32. Job 38:32, where God is uh, talking to Job, and uh, basically He says, "Where were you when I created the blessed Pleiades?" Well, that's interesting. Why would God call the Pleiades constellation blessed? Where were you when I created the blessed Pleiades? And then he goes on to say, Where were you when uh, I created Maseroth? And can you create Maseroth in its season? And so Maseroth is is an ancient Phoenician Canaanite, what we call Hebrew, uh, an ancient Hebrew word for the zodiac. Any Bible dictionary reference work or any encyclopedia of the Bible will tell you, or any good uh, any good library. I mean, any good dictionary. Period. Just look up the word Maserat that's in Job thirty-eight, and all dictionaries will tell you it's the it's the zodiac, twelve signs of the zodiac. So here in the oldest book of the Bible, Job, God is saying to Job, "Where were you when I created the zodiac?" Well. Uh, when Jesus uh, in the New Testament tells us to uh, pray the the Lord's Prayer, uh, well, first of all, that's not the Lord's Prayer. That's the prayer the Lord told us to pray. Uh, And so, but the Lord's Prayer uh, says, uh, Our Father who art in heaven, uh, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come and let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That is very, very interesting in relation to Maserat. 
So back, go back over it again. Let thy kingdom come and thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We'll break it down like, uh, like, the, the, like it was written. First of all, let thy kingdom come. Well, what kind of life forms on the earth do we know to be a kingdom? Uh, fish or in schools and birds or in flocks. Uh, you know, and uh, lions are in prides, and but what is it? What kind of life forms on the earth is it that's in a uh, a kingdom? It's the animal kingdom, and so the animal kingdom is what the what the Jesus is talking about. Let thy kingdom come. Uh, the animal kingdom. Well, where do you find animals? Animals are in a zoo. So uh, the study of the animal kingdom is called zoology, from which we get the word zodiac. Zodiac is the study of the zoo of animals, because the zodiac is understood to be a circle of animals. So therefore, the kingdom of God is the zodiac, the, the circle of animals. And you ask any six-year-old child, any Christian or Jewish child, uh, where is God? And they will point straight out into heaven. Well, that's where God is. He's out in heaven. Uh, and so, well, of course, that's where the zodiac is. It's out in the stars. It's out in the heavens. So then he goes on to say, let thy kingdom come, which is the kingdom of animals, animals in a zoo. We're talking zodiac. And let thy will be done. Well, on earth as it is in heaven. So what it's saying is that let thy will be done on the earth. Well, you're looking up into the heavens, you're looking at the 12 signs of the, of the zodiac, and you're saying let thy kingdom come. Well, it's going to come, whether you like it or not. And let thy will be done. Well, the will of the gods is in the zodiac. The 12 signs of the Zodiac is translated to be the will of God. And so um, let thy kingdom come and thy will be done on the earth, yes, as it is in heaven. Meaning, looking into the uh, 12 signs of the Zodiac, uh, if you understand it correctly, the way Nostradamus did, and the way the, the great... Uh, theological minds of the of the ancient world understood all of this. Uh, we don't understand it today at all, but the way the ancient people understood it, that the will of God is the will of the zodiac, the twelve signs of the zodiac, and each one of those signs uh, influences the earth. It influences uh, Sagittarius influences us. Uh, a Scorpio influences the earth. And that's why all the kings and rulers and princes and all the heads of state have always uh, consulted the astrologers because they weren't stupid. We are stupid. We, the, the people today, we don't even know what we're doing. Uh, however, the ancient peoples, and especially the old way, was to consult the stars, and there's all kinds of documentation in the Bible uh, showing that the Old and the New Testament in the Bible is nothing more than astrology, period. Mm -hmm. That's what the Old Testament is. That's what the New Testament is. This is why Jesus is referred to as God's Son. And we think of it as S-O-N, like your boy, like your offspring, your male offspring is your son. No, no, it's S-U-N, God's son, the light of the world. Well, of course the sun lights the world. What else lights the world is it the sun? And so the sun uh, uh, does not belong to you or the Chinese or anybody else on the earth. You know, as much as we like to think we own the whole universe, we don't own nothing. Humans don't own anything. We're just uh, we're just uh, uh, like ants on an ant pile, and each one of us thinking we got the whole truth and we know everything about everything. But we don't go back to the old way and understand mm -hmm. the way understand the way that the the ancient peoples taught 
And so that's what I'm suggesting that would be nice for us to do, just for the hell of it, is go back to the old way and uh, and see what the ancient people said about theology and God, etc. And you will find that uh, all of the ancient world was far, far wiser than we are. They were building pyramids and and temples and understood the heavens and understood life far better than we did. We, we're at totally at a loss for everything. All we understand is the baseball score and um, pay your taxes and drink a lot of beer and party and watch the, uh, watch the game on TV. That's all we know. That's why our world is in the mess we're in because we don't understand the esoteric and the occult world of wisdom and mm-hmm. knowledge. And uh, so in the King's English, the old King's English, uh, the word star, which we spell S-T-A-R, actually was spelled A-S-T-A-R, Astar. So in the old old ancient King's English, Astar was a star. We take the A off of it and just spell it star. Uh, so the idea was in the ancient, in the in the uh, Middle Ages, early Middle Ages, the idea was is that if you don't understand the zodiac in relation to your life and the twelve signs, which is the kingdom of God, and you don't understand how the kingdom uh, will uh, come on the earth and its and, the, and its will, the God's will will be done on the earth, whether you like it or not. Uh, so if you don't understand the zodiac, then you don't understand the astars. And if you don't understand the astars, then your life is going to be a disaster. And that's where we get mm-hmm. the concept of disaster, because you don't understand the stars. You have no idea in the world what's actually, in fact, happening on the Earth or in the solar system or in the universe or in your galaxy. We don't have the faintest idea in the world about none of it because we've lost track of wisdom and knowledge. And in the place of it, we put basketball and stupidity. But the ancient peoples didn't have television and silly uh, sitcoms and Bugs Bunny and all the silly crap that's been developed for us to keep us occupied so we don't think too much and dumb us down. The ancient peoples realized and understood the ancient teachings of the wisdom teachers and so my feeling has always been, I think it would be better just to go back to the old way, like the scripture says. And so the old way is to understand the 12 signs of the, uh, of the zodiac as, uh, as representing God's kingdom. And how, and how those 12 signs impact us today. So again, if you, if you keep in mind, Jesus is referred to as God's son, the light of the world. And the sun, in relation to the earth, has 12 signs of the zodiac out there in heaven. That's where God is, out there in heaven. Well, that's where the sun is. The sun, if it was out in the sky, well, the sky is called heaven. So therefore, mm-hmm. the sun does not belong to anybody. It belongs to God. So it's God's sun, and he's in heaven. And once you begin to see that God's sun, who is in heaven, of course the sun's in heaven. Where they all else would it be if they're not in heaven? Well, God's son's in heaven, and he is our He is our risen Savior. Of course, he's our risen Savior. The damn thing don't come up. We're dead in three weeks. So and all life on the earth is dependent on the sun. Your food won't grow. And if there is no sun, believe me, the North and South Pole was nothing compared to what the whole earth is going to be in three or four weeks. If the sun dies out, we don't have a sun the whole earth will be covered with ice. So God's Son is our risen Savior. Why? Because it comes back every morning. Thank God. And in winter, it dies. In winter, to us, in the Northern Hemisphere, it dies to us. And But, it, but you know, but eventually it springs back to life in spring. And, uh, and then it comes back to the Northern Hemisphere and when it starts uh, summer, Summer is uh, in the constellation of Leo, Leo the lion. And so that's one of the constellations of the zodiac is the lion, Leo the lion. So that's why God's son, uh, the light of the world, is referred to as the lion of the tribe of Judah. 
And so then you have all these silly, uh, silly as religions talking about all of them. Our leader was the Lion of the tribe of Judah. It's all sun worship. It's all astrology. It's all the old way. But people don't understand the difference between the old, ancient, profoundly important uh, way of the ancients, who the uh, the Egyptians, the ancient Hindus, the ancient world of ten thousand years ago where the real wisdom of the universe was. No, we don't understand any of that today. we got religions and churches and TV and TV preachers, and uh, none of it makes any sense to anybody who is spiritually inclined because there's nothing to religion. Religion mm-hmm. is simply a business, and this is why Christianity has churches that are divided into denominations. You know, like tens and twenties and fifties. That's what we call money in denominations. Because religion today is simply a corporation. It's a business. And and the business is to entertain. So the church is is neck and neck with Hollywood. Hollywood is trying to get as many people into uh seats to make money and to entertain the people. So they come up with a different sermon every time you turn around it's a new movie a different sermon, a different story, something new, so that everybody will come to the church or actually come to the, the, the theater. And incidentally, that's where we get our word theater from, from the Greek word, the ancient way. The Greek word for God is theo, T-H-E-O, theo. So God is theo or the, T-H-E, which gives us our word theater. Our, our theology. So therefore, theology is the worship of Theo or the, and the study of Theo or the study of God. Theology is given to you in a theater. So in the ancient Greek world, you would go to an outdoor theater to learn about Theo or God. So once you, you know, the, the bottom line is that this is why Jesus is referred to as God's Son. He's our risen Savior. Of course, it rises every morning about 5.30. And like I said, it is your Savior. If it don't come up, you're dead. And uh, he had 12 followers. They were called the apostles, the, the followers of God's Son. You know, that's the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 months of the year, which gives us 12 hours of day and the 12 hours of night. But God's son had an evil brother. He had an evil twin. Well, that's uh, that's that's um, the constellation uh, of the twins. And so, what was God's son's twin? Was the prince of darkness, because when the sun came up, he was the light of the world. But he had an evil brother who was the prince of darkness. And so, we call that the devil. Well, it's simply. Anything that opposes light is darkness. And so devil is simply putting a D, the letter D, in front of the word evil. So write evil and put a D in front of it, it becomes devil. And the same root word for God, which is good, G-O-O-D, taking the O out of good, becomes God. God is good, the devil is evil. And so all of this needs to go back to the old way. Go back to the beginnings of the ancient world and then you will find for the first time in your life how the stuff on the earth really works. And Mm -hmm. then you begin to see that your life is a disaster because you don't understand how the universe works. And uh, But kings and rulers and princes and presidents, they, they want to know no, they're not like us. Uh, you know, if you go to church, people will ask you, are you a believer? Or how long have you been a believer? Well, governments and kings don't want to be believers. They want to damn well know. Well, the churches don't ask you, how long have you been a Gnostic? Because the Greek word Gnostic means to know. Mm-hmm. Well, nobody knows anything in a church. They go to this church for 50 years and you ask them a question, and they look at you with eye, glassy eyes. They, they don't know what you're talking about. It's because the churches are based on uh, the Christian church. I mean, how many people go to church and don't even know where the word church comes from? 
mm-hmm. and have no idea in the world what the word church means and where it actually came from. I mean, it's the same thing like uh, how many people believe in Jesus Christ and have no idea in the world what the word Christ actually, in fact, means. And uh, mm-hmm. a lot of people... A lot of people talk about the anointing. Jesus anointed them, and they've been anointed with Holy Spirit and have no idea in the world what anointing comes from, what that word means. So I'm just saying that this has been my life of, uh, that's the way I've lived my whole life. I, I much prefer going to the ancient records, going back into the ancient uh, Hindu, into the ancient uh, Egyptian the ancient uh, Phoenician Canaanites uh, into the ancient world of the ancient Greeks and studying the, the, the mythology of the Greeks, the Romans, and then into our modern day, into Britannia, into Europe, and then the development of religion into uh, America. And once you begin, you know, once you that do that kind of studying, it becomes overwhelming and in your face apparent that we are totally lost as a human race. We haven't got the faintest idea in the world what's going on. We couldn't build a pyramid today if they put a gun to your head. We don't have equipment big enough to, to build uh, a, a pyramid with 1,400 ton stones and go up, uh, go up 60 stories up with uh, 800 ton stones and uh, it's just incredible what the ancient peoples knew, the calculations they knew in the ancient Egyptian world and the ancient uh, Babylonian Sumerian system. They understood the heavens. They understood the ancient uh, concepts of life and how life developed. And, and you know, it's just amazing how much we don't know anymore in this world. And the reason why is because. We've been sold a bill of goods that all you need to know is how to do your job and go to college and get a work degree and get a degree, which is a work permit, so you can go out and get a job. And the word job Mm -hmm. goes back to the book of Job, spelled the same way, J-O-B, Job. And Job was, uh, the whole story of Job was nothing but trouble and heartache and, and and tragedy in the human life in the book of Job. That's why when you go to your job or your job, you know, there's nothing more than just heartache and work and you know and so words words and terms and symbols and emblems, religions, images, concepts, uh it's an extraordinary story of the ignorance and the betrayal of the human race. We have no idea in the world what's going on. But uh, there are people who do. And there are people who know exactly where we've come from, where we are now, and they are guiding us into a future that we as humans have no idea in the world where we're going. But I've been watching it for years. I've been talking about this for 50 years. That I know where America is going. Why? Because I know where it came from. As a matter of fact, mm-hmm. there's a star in the northern hemisphere that uh, the ancient peoples in the Arabic world call Amera. Amera is a star a system and a star in the system called Amera, from which we get because it was directly overhead in 1776. And so the founding fathers of this, uh, of this country uh, referred to our new established uh, order and they call it America because of the star America, which was over our head. And so when you look at the uh, history of uh, nations, the symbols in the occult uh, are hidden symbols of nations and peoples. Uh, it's all based on astrology. You know, when, when, the, when the Russian Federation was originally founded hundreds of years ago, directly overhead was the constellation of Ursa Major, which was uh, called the Great Bear. So that's why uh, Russia is referred to and represented uh, symbolically as the Great Bear. Why? Because of Ursa Major in the sky, the constellation, over that over that country at the time it was founded. So, I mean, over Mexico, the symbols in the Mexican, the symbols in America, uh, symbols over Europe, 
what do these words mean? What do the symbols mean? Where did these religions come from? Where did the concepts come from? Where are we at right now? And where are we going? It is one hell of a story of the stupidity, the ignorance, and how lost we are as a human race. We have no idea in the world where we're going and where we've come from. And Adolf Hitler said, if you're going to control the future, you need to control the present. And you can't control the present unless you know the, the, the past, where we've come from. So this is why none of this, this kind of material I talk about, none of this at all is found in schools. You will never hear any of this wisdom and knowledge and deep understanding of the history of the world and the history of the human race. You will never hear any of this in a school, and you will dare never hear it on radio or television because the people who run this planet are a lot of things, but stupid ain't one of them. And they realize that if you're going to, uh, if you're going to own the earth and and control the whole human race, uh, which you know that's that's the bottom line on life is to be in control of your business. Well, they made human life into a business, and they control the business. And how did they do that? Very simple by making sure the whole human race is occupied watching uh, Paris Hilton and the, and the, and the Lakers and uh, the Dodgers and drinking a lot of beer and partying and entertaining yourself, uh, give you plenty of alcohol, they make sure they have a damn uh, liquor store on every corner, and they make sure they have beer and, and whiskey on every corner, uh, they make sure you have plenty of entertainment on television and movies and and all kinds of things to keep you busy so that you don't get in the way of the people who run your world. Because they don't they are not interested in all that silly crap. That's called that's called plebeian entertainment. The music in Hollywood is referred to by professionals as plebeian music. Hollywood presents motion pictures, which are referred to in the house. If you know Hollywood, I've lived here for 53 years. It's plebeian entertainment. It's plebeian, plebeian uh, music. Plebeian was a, a, an old Latin word for the poor working class slobs. Uh, the Jews call them the goy, the poor unwashed, unwashed masses that are the ignorant public. Uh, give them uh, motion pictures and television and music and beer and drugs and sex, drugs, and rock and roll and music. and Just give them anything they want. Give them all the entertainment so they don't get in your way. Because their whole thing is, is not, you know, all collectively. The whole country's got an IQ of 40. And so they don't get in the way of the Donald Trumps and the Obamas, and the Zvignu Brzezinski's, and the Henry Kissinger's, and the masters of the world, who live like gods, while we live like cockroaches. So they they know, keep the people entertained. Make sure the men have plenty of sex, that's always good, keeps them busy. Make sure all the women have uh, uh, all this materialism, uh, you know, and sex, drugs, and music and entertainment, that all keeps them busy. So keep all of them busy, and for God's sakes, make sure the young children who are coming in, make sure they have plenty of sports and, uh, and, and you know, and cage fighting and martial arts, and keep the whole world occupied while the masters run the earth. And they rip you off and rape you and destroy you and put you into wars and violence and bloodshed. And then they bank you. And uh, so, you know, the more we change, the more we stay the same. We are still slaves as we have always been. Mankind has always been slaves. And we have no power. And the reason we have no power, and Americans have no power to do anything, and most people know that. And the reason we have no power is because knowledge is power. And we have no knowledge. We don't know our butt from a hole in the ground. We have no idea in the world what a Republican is. We have no idea what the word democracy means. 
We have no concept of how America was founded and who the people were and where the money came from and how America was a corporation out of uh, out of uh, India and that the whole United States of America uh, comes out of the Hindu India, um, the British East India Company is a corporation, and out of that corporation came another company uh, called the United States Corporation. And uh, we have no idea about any of this, how the world works. And so what I've always said is that people uh, do not understand how the world works. But I'll guarantee you one thing. I've been studying this stuff for 53 years and, I, and what little bit I know. That's why I say I'm not the world's foremost authority on anything. I, I know how much I don't know. And, but I do know how much the world doesn't know. So there, I, I don't see any hope for a better life for America or for the world. What I see as a, as a light at the end of the tunnel as a train coming. Because the, the world we live in is way too complex and way too ignorant and ill-informed and self-centered and egotistical and downright stupid. And, uh, and you, you cannot, you know, and I've been trying to educate people for 53 years by lecturing and talking to people in libraries and, and clubs and small groups. And the more I do it, I'm on radio and then I get on television. And I've been doing this for 53 years, and I can tell you that it, it's, it's pretty much hopeless because trying to educate the human race is like trying to empty the Pacific with a cup. There's a tsunami of human ignorance and stupidity that loves to waller in stupidity. We just love uh, one of the great European economists. Um, he wrote in one of his books, I'm trying to re remember his name right now, but he wrote in the book uh, many years ago that that the people of every nation in every time of history, every age of history, and all nations and all all countries of the world, humans have always supported a dictator. They have always supported a dictator. They are supporting dictators today, and they always will support a dictator because that's in the very nature of the human creature, man and woman. It's in our human nature to support a dictator. We see that in our worship of, of movie stars and Donald Trumps and, and Obamas and, and, uh, and Jimmy Carters. and We love to be in the presence of power and famous people while uh, actually the famous people are nothing but criminals. They're, they're fascists, Nazi, communists, filthy, degenerate murderers and criminals. They're on drugs. They're mentally deranged. They're inbred. They're raping and plundering behind the scenes and on their drugs and killing and planning murders and, and overtaking, uh, ripping off people and stealing. Uh, but we love it. The humans love to crawl on their knees to the emperor, and and we want to be in the. Everybody wants to crowd in and see the queen mom, the queen when she rides by in her gold chariot. We would just uh, you know wave our hands to try and see the queen, and we want to be in uh, to see the castle when the prince gets married. So the more we change, the more we stay the same. We're still the ignorant creation that somebody created a long time ago, and that's a whole new subject in itself. Who created us and where do we really come from? What's really in the Bible, not what you thought was there. So anyway, I can sit and talk for hours because I've been doing it for 50 years. And I realize and I understand that people hearing me, for the most part, I would say the overwhelming majority of people who hear me in this world have no idea what the hell I'm talking about. They haven't got the faintest idea in the world what the hell is Jordan Maxwell talking about. It hasn't got nothing to do with anything of any actual you know, importance like football or basketball or Paris Hilton getting laid or anything that is important to us. And they got nothing to do with Obama saving the whole world and being Jesus Christ has nothing to do with uh, with your work and where you work and the beer you're drinking. 
So, you know, and the basketball score, and the Dodgers are playing this weekend. So what is Jordan Maxwell talking about? Well, I'm talking about the ultimate conclusion of the human experiment on the earth is screwed. It's over. We have, we have come to the end of an age. We've come to the end of the Piscean Age, the Kali Yuga of, uh, of the ancient Hindus. We've come to a time in the human history of the earth when all of our bullshit is finally coming home. And God help the world for what's coming now. Because we live like animals, we think like animals, we're about as ignorant as an animal, and therefore our world is crumbling in front of us with pollution, violence, wars, you know, air is not fit to breathe, the food is contaminated, your politics and your leaders are all corrupt. The whole world lies in the power of the wicked one, like the scripture says, and there is not one that knows where he's going. So uh, I realize that what I do and the kind of things I talk about, most people are going to hear me and think, who is this uh, airhead, this old man that's belly aching about something? But what goes around comes around, and there will come a day when Americans and the world in general, human race in general, will begin to perceive that we have taken the wrong road a long time ago. And then that scripture will then apply where God says thousands of years ago, you should go back to the old way. Go back to the old way and let God's kingdom, the zodiac, understand it. Understand how the world really works. One other thing I would uh, give you an example of, of how I think. The, uh, if you own, and I, I know that people have probably have heard this before, but I think it bears uh, witness again, that uh, if you have a two-story building and you're going to put a heavy a lot of weight on the second floor, like printing presses and heavy equipment, before you do that, if you've got any sense at all, you should call a building inspector and go downstairs and get on a ladder and remove the ceiling tiles from the first floor and look at the foundation of the floor to see what you're building on. Before you go put no heavy weight on it, you better go downstairs and look at the floor and see if it's going to hold that kind of weight before you go building on it. So what you're doing is you're standing downstairs, you're standing under the foundation you're building, you're building on. So you're standing under to get understanding. So if you haven't stood under the world of stupidity and ignorance and spent many years studying the occult and the wisdom of the ancients and how the world works, then you don't have understanding until you stand under the world that you live in. And I've said, too, that if you are going to uh, ship a box or carton across the, uh, the country, you go out in the garage and you get some rope and you can tie the box up, and that, uh, that's sufficient. But if you're going to take that same rope and walk out to the edge of a high-rise building and tie it off and, craw- and, and hang, you're going to hang on that rope off a building, then you had better check the integrity of that rope before you go hanging your life on it. So the point I'm making here is before you go believing anything, you better wake up and get a get a brain and get a piece of brain and start looking at the history of the human race and what the words mean and what the concepts mean and why they use certain colors. You need to understand that the white man's system, what we call the white man's world, is Europe, north, east, west, and southern Europe, which is where we get our word news, north, east, west, south, N-E-W-S, news. So when you understand where the white man comes from is north, east, west, and south of Europe, and one of the most important uh, facts about the white man's world is that Europe was the center of the world. For 2,000 years, Rome has ruled Europe, the Roman Empire under the Caesars, and then 1,600 years ago, with the fall of the Roman Empire, came the Vatican. So the Holy Father in the Vatican is Caesar in Rome. You don't think so? 
watch the way all the, the national leaders and world leaders and all the big shots who run the earth, they go and bow on their knees and kiss the ring of the Pope. Why? Because he is Caesar, Pontifex Maximus, the biggest white man on the planet, period. Therefore, if you don't understand the white man, you don't understand what's going on in the world, you don't understand any of it. And uh, one of the most important symbols in the old ancient European system of the white man uh, was a ma- well, the, well, the whole white establishment in Europe was referred to as the Druids, the Druidic peoples, were the white man in Europe. And the Druids were a very powerful club. I mean, it was a big club, and you ain't in it. And so the big club was the Druid priesthood. They were the lawyers, the doctors, the judges. They were the bankers. They were the religious leaders. They were anything that was important in a white man's world. The, you know, the members would be of the Druid movement. And one of the most important symbols in the white man's Druid uh, system was uh, a magic wand. Like Merlin the Magician with his magic wand. Well, magic wands were always made out of the wood of a holly tree. It was made out of Hollywood. I don't know if you're getting what I mean. I'm just telling you the whole world is ignorant, ill-informed, and we're all slaves because knowledge is power and we don't have any power. Have I made a point or or do you understand what I'm saying? I definitely follow your work and I'm actually familiar with a lot of the terms you're saying. I think a lot of people who are tuned into the show realize a lot of that and I realize that that that's actually what you have to do is you have to pull that chair out from under them to show them that they understand nothing, that they need to overstand it, right? That's right. To show them that, that, that their religions are a farce and that their ideologies and their doctrines are the traditions of men which Christ spoke of. And I've had a lot of personal conversations with you, Jordan, and I can sense your heart, the fact that you, if anyone teaches the teachings of Christ as they were meant to be taught and understood and actually believes you know, what the man was saying, it's you. And I think a lot of people who are in the chat room, a lot of people who are listening, they are the ones who understand that, look, we know that this system is messed up. We know that that they've got us by the balls, so to say. What are we supposed to do? How do we return to the ancient past? Because we're looking for a leader. The pastors aren't leading you. Uh, The government's not leading you. We're looking for someone who is going to stand up and be the standard. So that's why, you know, you know, we have people like you on the show. People flock to my music and the different the different people who are involved with it and things like that. So, where would you say like? starting at ground one for somebody wanting to get back to the ancient path, to abandon religion but not abandon God because we know that there's a supreme ruler who rules us all. All right. I have no, I, I have no problem whatsoever with the concept of the idea of God. So people ask me if I believe in God. I said, no, I don't believe in God. I know there's a God. Mm-hmm. So that's the difference between being a believer. You know, so if you go to church, you know, if you go to churches, people will say, "Well, how long have you been a believer? Are you a believer?" And look up in the dictionary. Christians are called believers. Mm-hmm. But I am of the opinion it's about time you stop believing and mm-hmm. do what the federal government does. Do what the governments of the world do. As bad as they are, they're smart enough to know you don't run a damn government by believing. You better know. You better have spies. You better know. You better record it and get uh, get witnesses to it and get your spies in there and find out for sure. So when you know something, you don't need to believe. You damn well know. And I I have watched history and been and been a student of history for 53 years of my life in the dark side of history. I call it the occult world. The word occult simply means, in Latin, hidden. And therefore, I know that real wisdom and knowledge and understanding is hidden. Of course it's hidden. Talk Mm -hmm. about wisdom and knowledge and understanding to the modern-day people, and they don't know what you're talking about. They never heard those words. 
Exactly. You talk about uh, you talk about Pythagoras or Plato yeah. or Aristotle, and they want to know what team does he play on. You know what what you know, <laughs> was it basketball or is he bounce a ball or is he throw a ball? <laughs> and then you find out, you know, that's what the life is all about. It's a ball game. Yeah. That's why when you're a kid, yeah. they tell you don't, you know, just play ball. Be a team player. Be a team player and, and play ball. I don't want to play ball. I've had enough of ball games. So yeah. This is all that the human race has is football and basketball and tennis ball and soccer ball and kick a ball. This is what you give children. IQs of 40 and below. This is what you give children. Is a ball, you know. The adults tell the kids go out and play ball, and then when you go to work at, a, at your at your work, they, they want you to be a team player, and then they call you in and say, you know what, you're not playing ball. So I understand uh, that's the way the masters who own us and who own the world. That's the way they see us. The Mao Zedongs they wanted everybody to play ball, and if you don't play ball, they kill you. That's what Adolf mm-hmm. Hitler was all about. That's what Mussolini was all about. That's what all of these fascist murdering dictators and political pundits, that's what they're all about. They're keep the world occupied and collect them all up together. Collect them all together. It's called collectivism. Get the whole country with an IQ of 70 so that everybody will look alike, everybody will sound alike, everybody will like the same music, they'll like the same song, and uh, and they'll all pay money, and they'll all do what you're supposed to do, while the masters uh, smoke their cigars in the Cayman Islands and live like kings, laughing at the human race. So, again, we have no power because we have no knowledge. Knowledge is power. Jordan, I... Uh... I- I was just thinking who tying this all in, how we kind of started out. A lot of people I don't think realize that a lot of this is in the Bible. And a lot of people think they think that, like the Jews or the Israelites, they think of it as starting out with Moses or Abraham. And they don't realize that if you go back even before the flood, before Noah, Enoch is like the patriarch of patriarchs. And the book of Enoch is kept from us. And in there, it pretty much explains how all of this stuff was explained to him. Well, look at in the, in the in the New Testament, and one of the last books of the Bible, I think it was in Jude, one of the last books in the New Testament says, and Enoch also prophesied. Do you know there's about thirty, uh, thirty-five at last count? Uh, I have it on my website. There's about thirty different books uh, that the Bible uh, and, and the Old and New Testament that the Bible talks about that are holy books about 30 of them, 30 different titles of books that are in the Bible, that the Bible says are holy books that are not in the Bible, that we don't yeah. have. And so yeah. there are 30 different books in the Bible, but we don't have them. And yeah, they're the actually New quoted Testament in the Bible. Book, yeah, and in the book of Jude, it says, Enoch also prophesied. And and you say, well, wait a minute, is that Christian? Is that in the Bible? Yes, it's right there in the book of Jude. It said Enoch prophesied. Well, where is his prophecies? Well, we don't have that. Well, where are the prophecies of the ancient peoples that the, uh, the other 30 were? Well, we don't have that. Well, where did, uh, where did it go? It ain't none of your business. Just go and have a beer and go to church and uh, and do whatever, and, and drop somebody in the, in the, in the, uh, in the, in the church and... And then you say, wait a minute, wait a minute, where does the word church come from? What does that word actually mean? And uh, then when you trace that down, that's when things really start getting interesting. Is when you, you know, and all three of, uh, of the major religions of the world, um, Christianity, Judaism, and Islam, all three uh, say that their father is Abraham. All three of them agree that Abraham is the basis for all three religions. And incidentally, all three of those religions are referred to as people of the book because all three mm-hmm. religions rely on a book. The Quran or the Bible or the Old Testament or the Torah, it's always a book. And so when you get a book, you're going to get mistranslations and all that stuff. That's why God says, go back to the old way. Because you know, he, man, mankind can mistranslate, mis, 
misunderstand uh, words and terms and, and trying to translate from one language to another, but you can't change nothing in the heavens. You can't change the 12 signs of the zodiac. You can't mistranslate. They are what they are, and they've been there, and they're going to be there, and you need to wake up and find out that's the real truth. And so when you begin to break down what the uh, what the ancient peoples understood and what they knew, then it makes sense. The Bible says go back to the old way. So, yeah, I think that what's needed in this world is a reformation. You know, you always hear Christians talking about they're going to have a big revival, a church revival. Well, by God, that's what's needed. We need a revival because a revival, you know, the people... If you need to be revived, that means you're dead. That means you're knocked out and you need to be revived. That's why Christians are always having a revival. But the problem is they're just being revived in the same old crap, the same old lies, the same old man-made occult religions, the same old stuff. And this is why people go to church for 50 years and not know anything because they're not being given anything. They're not being taught anything. All they're getting is candles and singing and hymns and dancing around the stage and all of this pusillanimous stuff that the humans do on stage in churches and synagogues and mosques. And they think God, you know, they tell me about God. I like what Dick Gregory said, you know, tell me about God. God is dog spelled backwards. You need to wake up and find out you are a very small part of this earth. You human. And the Earth is a very small part of the solar system, and the solar system is a very small part of a galaxy, and this galaxy is a very tiny galaxy, and there's hundreds of billions of galaxies. So you want to talk to me about God, you better go back and do some homework, because you ain't talking about the same God I am. You're talking about an old Eucharistic Phoenician Canaanite God called Yahweh. And Yahweh mm-hmm. was nothing more than a Phoenician, Canaanite, Ugaritic god of the ancient Sumerians, the Babylonians. So, I mean, I'm, I'm just telling you that, that there's a world of wisdom and knowledge that people don't have. And that's why our country and our lives, personally and in our country, we're in a mess because we don't understand anything. And it's, yeah, you're right. We need somebody to, to rise up in this world of darkness and to bring some light into it. But I'll tell you what, I've been trying to do that, and all that's brought me was heartache and tragedy and the loss of everything. So I don't know if it's even possible, because I feel like trying to save the human race is like trying to empty the Pacific with a cup. You know, the the whole world is is submerged in a tsunami of self-centered, egotistical sports, drinking, partying, but somewhere along the line, the world, the, the, there's trouble coming on the earth. There's violence and bloodshed and murder and raping and plundering and drunkenness and drug addiction and gangs and drive-by shootings and law, lawlessness all over the world. The world is coming to a very bad place, and we're going there fast, and there's nothing anyone can do about it because we have no knowledge we don't know where we've come from. We have no idea where we are, and nobody knows where we're going. Why? Because we're ignorant and we love it. We don't want to know. We're not interested to know. So we got TV. Who the hell needs to go look at all that old stuff? But one day soon, we're going to wake up and find out. And then at that time, the wisdom and the knowledge is going to be at a premium. People are going to want to know. Well, it's going to be a little too late. So that's why I do the best I can with what I've got. And believe me, it's very, very difficult, and you're going to pay a hell of a price to do what I did. I've lost my wife, my family. Since 1989, I've been homeless. I sleep on the floor, and I'm broke, and I have nothing. Zero. Nothing. I have no bank account, no credit cards, no children, no home, nothing. If I wasn't for my friend who gives me a room to, to, to live in, I wouldn't even have a room. I couldn't sleep in my car. I don't have one. And so, you know, that's what that's what my work has given me. Nothing but heartache and tragedy and loss of everything. So, but you get what you pay for. You know, you 
It's, uh, it's an old story. You get what you pay for. I wanted to know, so now I know. And I paid a hell of a price for it. Jordan, I got a question. I, I always, in my research, for the first couple of years, everywhere I looked, it turned up sun worship. And it's like, yeah, everybody knows about sun worship. But over the course of the last year, I would say just nonstop, it keeps coming up, Saturn worship. And I was just curious what what you got to say about you know, the ancient Sat- Saturnalian cults and oh, the Lord. role that they played. Give me, <laughs> don't get me started on that. My God, we'd go for another four hours just on that one subject. Yeah, Saturn, the ho- the God of the Jews, the Hebrew God. You know, we're told that, that the Hebrew religion, uh, the, the Jews were the first monotheistic people. Now, anybody who's got more than 500 brain school, uh, 500 brain cells going in the right direction and has gone to school to learn how to read knows that that's ludicrous on the face of it. Anybody who's ever read a history book knows that's that's ludicrous. The Jews were the first monotheistic people. No such a thing ever existed. First of all, there was no ancient Israel and the Jews are not monotheistic because Mm -hmm. the word mono means one and theistic again, theo, theistic means God. So the Jews were the worshippers of one God. They were monotheistic. No, they weren't monotheistic. They have never been monotheistic. They're not monotheistic now, and they ain't never going to be monotheistic. Uh, and so mono means one God. Hebrews, the uh, what we call the Hebrew people, were heno. It's spelled H-E-N-O. Very simple. H-E-N-O-theistic. Henotheistic. Henotheistic means picking one out of a group. So let's say there's 20, uh, there, are, there are 20 gods, and you're looking at all 20, and you pick one. And so therefore, you pick one, and you make a contract with that one god. I'll be your servant, and you will be my god. So therefore, we could say that you are the worshiper of one god. Yes, but there doesn't mean there's only one god. No, hell, there's 20 of them. But you pick one. And so that's for a uh, dictionary definition of Hebrews is they are henotheistic. They pick one God. They're not the worshipers of one God, like there's only one God. No, the Hebrews picked one God. And their God they call Yahweh. And so the Christians, they were the worshipers of one God. Yeah, They picked one too, called Jesus. And the and the Islamics they picked one of the gods too, and he was called Yahweh or, or Allah. And I'm saying, you know what? If any of these people had a brain, they would be dangerous. All of these words of the gods all go back to the old Ugaritic, Phoenician, Canaanite, ancient cults of the of the ancient gods, and nobody seems to know that Islam is worshiping an old ancient Ugaritic, Phoenician, Canaanite god who is Allah, which is the same God that the old Phoenician, Canaanite, Ugaritic peoples gave to the Hebrews, which is Yahweh. So Yahweh is Yahweh, and Yahweh is Yahu. That's why you have uh, the, uh, the whole Jewish um, thing with the Jewish God on the, on the web called Yahu. Yahu is Yahweh, Yahweh, uh, Allah. It all goes back to, and it's in dictionary. My God, you don't have to be an astronaut or a brain surgeon to figure this out. Just go back and look at a dictionary and look up Yahoo or Yahweh or Allah, and you'll see it all goes back to the old Phoenician, Canaanite, Ugaritic, ancient Sumerian system of gods. And uh, it's all the same stuff. It's all on the whole ancient gods and ancient Hindus and my Lord, I mean, where does this stop? Where does this stuff? And looking at the way that people live, I mean, that's why the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. What is the fruitage of the worship of Yahweh? What is the fruitage of the worship of Allah? What is the fruitage of looking uh, of worshiping Jesus? What is the fruitage? You know, there's a scripture in the Bible that there's a story in the Bible where people came to Jesus. And they had seeds in their hand, and they asked him, what kind of seeds are these? And he looked at them and said, why don't you plant the thing, airhead? Why don't you plant the seeds, water the seeds, and watch what comes up? 
that way you pretty well uh, are assured what what kind of seeds they are because if an apple tree comes up I well I guess it were an apple seed but if a pear tree comes up I guess it was a pear tree so the best way to know what kind of seeds they are is go plant the thing stupid and see what comes up then you'll know for damn sure what kind of seed it was well what is the seed the offspring or the fruitage of the three religions uh, of the worship of Allah Yahweh Jesus, what is the old fruitage of the, you know, because like the Bible says, by their fruits you shall know them. Well, look at the fruitage of the three religions of the people of the book today. Around the earth, bloodshed, violence, pornography, drug addiction, murder in the Middle East, blowing up, killing people, uh, children, women uh, running around, what completely covered and black. And 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 the and the men ranting and raving and screaming they're gonna kill everybody if they don't love Allah and the Jews are God's chosen people that love the Lord and everybody else can go to hell and everybody else is beneath them and the Christians hate everybody. It's just a mess because nobody understands where any of this come from and they all have have like the scripture says, all mankind has lost its way. They're all ignorant. They're all nothing but a bunch of pagan, silly ass religions. And what is the fruitage of, of man's pursuit? Like the scripture says, a mankind has formed for themselves teachers. We yeah. form our own religion. We don't give a damn about what God says. We don't care what the universe says. We don't care what the ancients knew. We form for ourselves teachers. And we call it we call it Islam, and we will kill you if you don't love our God. And we will rape and, and we'll marry six-year-old children and six-year-old girls, and consummate our marriage with a nine-year-old child. And if you don't like it, because Allah loves us, and and we love Allah, and He loves everyone. And if you don't love Allah, we'll kill you. We'll cut your head off. And uh, and the Jews are God's chosen people. They love the Lord, and they are the chosen people of God. And everybody else can go to hell and crawl on their knees at work for them. Uh, I'm just amazed at, at uh, you know, and, and it doesn't seem that too many people have caught on to what's going on here. It's just, it's just companies, mm-hmm. it's just corporations, it's just business. Yeah. So, what, you know, hey, Jordan, we've got a couple of people on the line. You mind taking a call? I can team? imagine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, look at I would I would preface this by saying, yeah, we can we can take people and we can take calls, but that doesn't mean I know. You know, if yeah. they ask questions, that doesn't mean I know the answer. Okay. All right, so if you're on the line, uh, just have your questions ready. We're going to go to a caller in uh, Northeast Illinois. Are you there, caller? Hey, yeah. It's Matt. It is. Hey, welcome to the show, man. Thanks. Um, well, first off, just want to say that I have a lot of difficult, deep questions, which probe into some highly esoteric areas. So I'm sorry if you're unable to answer any of the questions that I ask because of difficulty or because of oaths or whatever. If that's the case, I completely understand. So just say pass, and I'll move on immediately. Um, Also, thank you so, so, so much for your work. I've been through most of it, and it has helped me come to many important, eye-opening realizations. I'm deeply honored just to be sharing energy and words with you over the phone tonight. Um, Well, thank you. I have uh, three quick questions first. Uh, First off, can you give a quick reference list off the top of your your head of the different symbols of the Old Testament as they relate to the different glands and parts of the body? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Manny P. Hall did the best work on that in a book called Man, the Measure of All Things. There's a big, thick book that Manly P. Hall put out that, that, that explains all of that so much better, called Man, the Measure of All Things, where all the parts of the body are in relation to esoteric knowledge, which is applied to different races of people, different religions, and different symbols. Uh, he also has a, a magnificent book that basically talks about this stuff, too, called Secret Teachings of All Ages. You really need to get that book. It's an e-book. You can get it for free, but I would suggest buying it also. Oh. Uh, it's called Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly, M-A-N-L-Y, P. 
Hall, H A L L, Manly P. Hall, was one of the greatest minds the world has ever known, one of the greatest teachers that ever lived in any era. And he wrote so many impress- impressive and incredible books explaining all the occult and hidden symbolism in world religions. And yeah, it's a very interesting story about how man is the measure of all things. And uh, other parts of our body, the relation to the zodiac, in relation to symbols of government. Uh, yeah, it's a, it's a hell of a it's a hell of a study, you know. Anyway. But I, I, those are the two I would say right off the top of my head would be uh, Man, the Measure of All Things by Manly P. Hall and uh, Secret Teachings of All Ages by Manly P. Hall. Thanks. I've already started yep. one of those, and now I'll definitely uh, try and finish. Go on um, the web also. Go on the web also to uh, manlyphall.org. O-R-G, manlyphall.org. And there's a lot of, uh, of his uh, lectures for free uh, on astrotheology, and it will blow your mind. It's all free. Just go there and listen to it. Just go. You don't have to go to uh, audio, video, or to uh, YouTube. You, you can go to YouTube also, and a lot of Manly P. Hall's lectures and, and, uh, and, and speeches are on YouTube, Manly P. Hall. But you can go to manlyphall.org, and there's a whole series of about eight or nine 90 minute lectures on astrotheology, the basis for the ancient world religion. And all of this I'm talking about, it's all there. And each one's 90 minutes long. There must be eight or nine different lectures on this one subject of the old way where the old, the ancient way of understanding the symbols in the Bible, what it, what they meant, extraordinarily brilliant stuff right there for free on manlyphall.org. Thank you. I'm excited. You got another question? Yeah. Um, I've been trying to identify the different astrological ages according to their prevailing religious orders and kingdoms. For instance, yeah. the age of Cancer was the age of Atlantis and the comet cataclysm. And the age of Pisces has been the age of the Gentile Church. Can you shed mm-hmm. light on the major kingdoms during the ages of Gemini and Taurus? Were those the, or was Taurus the Sumerian and Vedic Aeon, or was that Gemini? Or who are the major? Well, I think the, the age of Taurus uh, takes us back to uh, India, because Taurus the bull, like the bull of the stock market, <clears throat> and believe me, they are full of bull. But um, the age of, of uh, Taurus was the age of the bull, and a bull has a calf. And so the Hebrews and their story, and the story uh, was the worship of the golden calf. And we know about the story of the Jews worshiping the golden calf. Well, the golden calf, golden is the sun in the age of Taurus the bull, the golden calf. And, and then Moses uh, comes at the end of the 2,160-year period when they were worshiping the sun in the age of Taurus, which was uh, at the time that India was dominant on the earth, and that's a long time ago, Hinduism in India. And so Moses, the story goes that Moses comes along uh, at the end of the 2,160 years that the Jews supposedly were worshiping God's, God's son, the light of the world in the age of Taurus the bull, the golden calf. And so Moses comes in to bring the new age. The new age is the next uh, constellation of the zodiac and line going backwards. And the next constellation with Taurus is uh, Aries the ram. And so Moses comes to initiate the uh, the uh, new age of, a, of uh, Aries from which we get the blowing of the ram's horn. And and uh, and, and so the, the Hebrews were told in the Bible, uh, rejected the new age. They said to Moses, we don't want the new age. Uh, we, uh, we've been for 2,160 years, we've been worshiping our God, uh, Yahweh, the old sun god, uh, in the age of Taurus. Well, you know, we've come to love the golden calf, and we don't want this new, uh, this new age. It's all a bunch of bull. Well, that's the same thing today we've got. We've got Christians running around talking about God's son who fed his 
people. Jesus fed his people with two fish, and he was the great fisherman, and all his followers were fishermen, and he was referred to as the great fisherman, and he fed his people with two fish. And the two fish are, of course, Pisces, the two fish of Pisces. And now that we're getting ready to leave after being in 2,160 years in the age of Pisces, we're getting ready to go into the next constellation, the next new age. And like the story in the Bible of the old Hebrews, they didn't want to go into the age of Aries the ram and blow the ram's horn of the shofar, but they ended up doing it. And so no longer did they worship the uh, the golden calf. Now they were blowing the, uh, they're blowing the ram's horn the shofar, because they're worshiping the sun in the age of Aries, the ram. And then about the year 325 A.D. came about the beginning of the next constellation, which was Pisces. Pisces was a symbol of the two fish. And so for some 1,600, uh, almost 1,700 years, we've been living now in the age of Pisces, or the worship of the two fish, and that's why Jesus, as I said, fed his multitude with the two fish. And then, the, uh, it's interesting, in the book of Luke 22.10, in the New Testament book of Luke 22.10, uh, the chosen twelve, the apostles, which is actually the twelve signs of the zodiac, of the twelve brothers of Joseph, the twelve tribes of Israel, the twelve apostles, the twelve, twelve, twelve. It all goes back to the twelve signs of the zodiac. Well, in the scriptures, in, in the book of Luke 22, the twelve uh, came, the twelve followers come to Jesus, the Son, S-U-N, and they say, now that you're going to die, and this is the last supper, the last Passover in the age of, of Pisces, the fish, where are we to go next? And the, the Bible says in Luke 22.10, Jesus, God's son, says to his 12, uh, go into the city and you will see a man with a water pitcher. Go into the house of the man with the water pitcher. Well, for God's sakes, it's obvious the water pitcher is the next sign of the zodiac, the age of Aquarius. And so this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And so, but Aquarius, from what I have been able to find, is not for another 400 years. we got over 400 years before we're going into the age of Aquarius because it looks like from all real scholarly interpretation of the, of the ages that Pisces, which began the Christian religion, the, the worship of the two fish, uh, which, incidentally, that's exactly what Christianity is. It was the worship of Pisces because the very first churches in Israel that we've, we've seen it on television, we've seen it in magazines and art and newspapers, when they found the oldest Christian church ever on the earth was found in Israel in an area where they were built. They, they had a prison and they were going to build a, a, an addition to the prison. So they were doing some excavation and, and clearing off the land, and they came across uh, an old church that had been buried. And it was in the news, and beautiful pictures of it. So it's on the web. And this old church was they, in Israel, they said, is the oldest Christian church ever found on the earth, period. And the old church uh, uh, on the floor was the, was the zodiac. And on the zodiac, the middle one in the middle of the church was on the floor, was Pisces, the two fish. Well, if that is the oldest church in the world and 2,000 years old, uh, you know, well, there it is. There's Christianity, the two fish. On the floor of the church is the zodiac. Go back to the old way. And so I'm saying I don't think that the uh, the age of Pisces began until around 325. That would put the age of Aquarius somewhere about 425, 430 years from now. But if each age is 2,160 years long, then uh, 400 years, or a little over 400 years, is uh, you know the the biggest part of the age of Pisces has passed. It's not completely gone, but it's pretty much gone. There's only about 400 years left. 
out of 2,160, only about 400 years left. So I guess you could say that we're living in the last days. These are the end times and the last days that Christians talk about. And Christians have no idea in the world what the last days of. I used to ask kids that when I was growing up. We're in the last days. Yep, there it is in the Bible. We're in the last days and the end times. The end times of what? A sale at Sears or, or, or the, the collapse of the world? What are we in the end times of? What is it that's ending? And if it ends, will there be something new? Of course there's going to be something new. Anytime something ends, there's going to be something new. Well, what is ending? The ending of the age of Pisces. Christianity is on its way out. The whole idea of Jesus ultimately one day is going to be completely gone, and in its place will be the new religion for the new age, the new age of Aquarius. That's what Jesus said. Go into the house with a man with the water pitcher. Well, what is the symbol of Aquarius if it's not a man with the water pitcher? And I would add to that, remember this, that men never carried water. Look at any dictionary, any encyclopedia on religion. Go to a seminary library and sit there for three weeks and read about water carriers, water bearers, people who carried water. Look it up in the dictionaries. Look it up in encyclopedias and reference works of the Bible. All the reference works will tell you the same thing. Men never carried water. You would be mocked and laughed at as a man if you carried water. That was a woman's job. and That's why Jesus was talking to the women at the well. Women went to, to carry the water. Men never carried water. In the ancient world, that was never to be done. Men don't carry water. Well, why did Jesus say, go into the city? In Luke 22.10, he says, go into the city, and you'll see a man carrying a pitcher of water. Well, men don't carry water. Well, what was he talking about? He's talking about Aquarius, the man with the water pitcher. It's all an encoded story. It's an encoded, hidden, occult story. And that's why today the world's in a mess it's in, because we take everything literally as, as literal uh, history, when in point of fact the whole Bible is an encoded, occult, or hidden wisdom, hidden knowledge, right in front of you. And that's why the scripture has Jesus saying, they will look with their eyes, but they do not see. They listen with their ears, but they do not hear. And with their heart, they do not get the sense of it. And that's precisely where we are today. People go to church and have no idea in the world what any of these symbols mean, why he's on a cross, why the man is dying on a cross, uh, why he has 12 apostles. I mean, and all of this stuff is very e uh, easily well known if you just do some reading. So you have to turn off mm -hmm. the TV and, and the sitcoms and Bugs Bunny and all the rest of it and start going back to school and learn how to read and learn how to think and begin to shut down all of your enthusiasm for the government and for the law and for the movie stars and for all the things of this world and begin to see that, like the scripture says, it has Jesus, Satan tells Jesus, I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world if you bow down to me. And it didn't mm -hmm. say, I will give you all the kingdoms except for, uh, except for Canada and Australia. No, all the kingdoms of the world means you too. All the kingdoms of the world are in the hands of the dark prince of darkness. For hell, you don't have to be an astronaut to figure that out. All over yeah. the earth there's violence and bloodshed and lies and corruption. The whole earth is corrupt. There's not yeah. one that, that has found their way. Not one is doing right. Not one is doing correct. And the whole world is lying in the power of the wicked one. He's called the Prince of Darkness. And the Prince of Darkness right. and each of us all set. Yeah, it's a hell of a... Well, Joe, we got, uh, we got I another... Go on, uh, listen, I can go on with this for yeah, hours. Yeah. I, I know that's you can. That's what I do. I know you can. We, uh, you know, we're trying to take some calls. Hey, uh, thanks, Matt, for the calls, man. Um, I know you got so much more. Well, I'm going to open up the phone lines to another caller in Georgia. I believe this is Devin. This is you, Devin? Hey. Hey, what's, what's going on, guys? Yeah. How's it going, Devin? We don't know. We don't know for sure. 
very fun, very funny, Mr. Maxwell. Hey, bro, hey, brother Maxwell. Ho, tap. I just wanted to uh, say that I've been following your work uh, for a couple of years, and um, you, you know, I, I've, I've listened to other uh, esoteric teachers and uh, researchers, and this, this one teacher. You know, said that uh, you know when you when you get involved in things like this, you know the the road to to wisdom is a very lonely one. And you got that right. Yeah, and I've experienced a a a a, a lot of things that went topsy turvy because for a minute I was I was actually gonna go, you know, and. Be, and be a pastor and everything. I, I was I was in Bible school. I'm 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 almost 23. I, I'll be I'll be 23 in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, well, don't blame that on me. That's not my problem. Yeah, of course. But, but uh, like I I was I was on my way to becoming a a, a pastor, and I just I just let go because. The, the person that influenced me uh, de- decided he he wanted to kill himself, and then a family member um, told me that he 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 was gay, and I didn't believe it. So I made a, a conscious decision to say, you know, do I do I do I do, do I really want to continue this path for myself? And then it 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 came it came to me. I was like, no, I don't I don't I don't want to be <coughs> manipulated by by the system and all that. I I love God and I I love knowledge, but but, but no, forget pastoring. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm I just, understand. Yeah. Yeah. Well, remember the Bible has Jesus saying, "The slave is no greater than the master. What they've done to me, they will do to you." Well, what, yep. what happened to the? And remember, Jesus said, "I am the truth and the light." I am right. the truth and the light. Well, right. he's exactly. the truth exactly. and the light. Yeah. Well, if he is the truth and the light, look what happened to him. Uh, and therefore, I said yeah. over and over that uh, the story of Jesus is a metaphor. He said, "I'm the truth and the light." Yeah. Well, look what happened to the truth and the light. Right. Right. Yeah, Ma- Ma- Master Sonando was was killed for it. That's true. <laughs> so 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 um, I I I have a I have a question for you. I, I don't want to talk to you to death, but I I have a question for you. You know you know I I I'm I'm a, I'm I well okay I was associated with the black church, and and I and I've I've dealt with people that were uh, biblically. Uh, oriented, and you, you know, you know, when when I, when I would try to teach them this stuff, the first thing that come out of their mouth is show show me show me where it's at in my Bible, you know, because they they all they always read in King James, and I'm I'm what they call the so called New Age kid, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but 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 I have to use my reference, you know. To, to, oh, I understand. To help, yeah, to help them get a better understanding, and then we can go into the King James. So my and and, and then out comes the arguing. I I even I even lost a a Christian girlfriend, you know, because I wanted to go deep into the occult. You know, I've I thought I've listened to you. I've listened to uh, Doctor Malachi Z York from. Uh, the the uh, the New Ampian community or whatever, uh, Bobby Hemet, uh, Delbert Blair, Phil mm-hmm. Phil Valentine, <laughs> yeah 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 yeah. So so I've been in, involved in the occult for almost going on three years, cause, cause my cause my awakening started with you, and that was back in December of 2011. Well, let me let me explain something to the audience. That when we use the word, when we use the word occult, uh, the church the church has given an interpretation to the word occult 
to mean devil worship, evil, child sacrifice, <laughs> all kinds of devil stuff. Ooh. Right? But the word occult is a Latin word which means, if you look it up in a dictionary, occult simply means hidden. So when you put your hand in your pocket, a dictionary definition says that your hand is an occult hand in that it's hidden. So anything that's hidden, the word in Latin, is occult. So occult doesn't mean evil or bad or devil worship. It means hidden. Well, I've been trying to tell you for the last hour and a half that the wisdom and knowledge and wisdom and understanding uh, of the heavens and of history and of the world has been hidden from people. And they've been given television and Donald Duck and Bugs Bunny instead. And so real knowledge, understanding, and wisdom of who we are, where we've come from, where we are, and where we're going has been hidden. But there are people in this world that are very powerful who do know things you don't know. And they're not about to tell you. Because like, like uh, George Carlin says, the people who are running this planet, it's a big club, and you ain't in it. So they're not going to tell you the real truth. Like the movie, A Few Good mm-hmm. Men, when, uh, when uh, Tom Cruise is badgering the old guy on the, on the witness stand, and the old guy says, kid, what do you want with me? And he said, I want the truth. And he said, you can't handle the truth. Well, that's what I feel about the world I live in. Everybody wants the truth, and everybody wants to know the truth. No, you don't want to know the truth. Don't give me that crap. You don't want to know the truth. And so that's why uh, German people would see Adolf Hitler come on the scene and murdering people and and destroying the freedom and destroying their country. They don't want to know what Hitler's doing. They don't want to hear it. They don't want to know. And when Mussolini came into Italy, the Italian people, they loved the dictator. They loved the emperors and all the the papacy and the pope riding around the pope mobile and the queen mum riding around in gold chariots. They loved that. They don't want to know the real truth. Well, the real truth Mm -hmm. is you can't handle the truth. The real truth is there's nobody coming back to save you because there was nobody here to start with. It's an encoded story. It's been encoded, and you don't know the code. So you don't understand. You talk about the God's kingdom, and you have no idea in the world what that means. And therefore, by yeah. the fruit, you shall know them. Look at the religions today. They're full of bull, yeah. the crap, money-grubbing. They're all a bunch of goofballs, airheads. My God, all you got to do is watch Christian TV. If that doesn't make you sick, nothing. Yeah. Else. Yeah, it's so, funny that a lot of people who aren't involved in religion can watch that stuff and understand that, hey, there's, there's something to this, you know, that it's crazy or whatever. But, hey, Jordan, thanks for coming on the show, man. Uh, yeah, thanks you know, right. so much for coming, you know, speaking to the audience and everything. Definitely like to have you back again. Yeah, let's do it. And my uh, go on my website to Jordan Maxwell Show. i got a podcast you can hear. Okay? All right, thanks so much, man. The Jordan Maxwell okay. Show dot com. Right, too. Bye bye. All right, brother. Yeah. So there was a lot that was, you know, said in that that interview. <clears throat> we're gonna, we're, you know, we're gonna talk about it a little bit. I, w- I want to go to the scriptures right quick, and this is something that you all need to understand. You know, everybody in the chat room listening, everybody listening on on a YouTube or whatnot. In the scriptures in the book of in the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes uh, chapter one, verse starting in. 16 and this is what happens 116 it says i could and and this is coming from solomon who you know god spoke to him and, and told him he can ask for anything he wanted riches wealth anything he wanted and he didn't want any of that he wanted wisdom and god gave unto him wisdom and knowledge and with the wisdom and knowledge he gave the other stuff as well the riches he was the richest man and the wisest man in all the earth so Ecclesiastes 1 and 16 says, this is from Solomon, I communed with my own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and I have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge. And it says right here, And I gave my heart to know wisdom. 
and to no madness and folly. And he goes on to say, I perceive that this is also vexation of spirit, for in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. So if your pursuit is to know the things that others don't know, to know the things that Jordan was talking about, to to look beyond the veil and, and to see the you know the inner workings of of the matrix and to see the inner workings of uh, what looks to be this awesome religion or this awesome understanding and then you, when you pull the curtain back you see that the wizard is just a little bitty old man running this uh you know pulling the strings you know behind the scenes so that's one thing that you need to consider we see a man with as much knowledge and research you know as Jordan Maxwell and he's basically at the end of his his life at the end of his career who's lost everything and he you know he he tells you he sleeps on the floor of a friend's apartment because he has given his his life to no wisdom and to no understanding and just as Solomon said he considered it vexation of spirit it vexed him it was burdensome for in much wisdom is much grief and he that increases knowledge increases sorrow because once you start understanding all these inner workings and finding out how the law works, finding out how religion works, finding out how the scriptures is really written and versus how they're taught within the churches and things like that, you become one who is, you feel like you're alone because nobody really cares about the zodiac. Nobody cares about the deep things of the spirit. They're, they're fine with dinner in a circus. So I just want you know all the listeners just to understand it's like, are you seeking after the knowledge? Are you seeking after the, the creation or whatever? But what we believe that we have a relationship with the creator, with the divine creator, and that there is a hope. And it's not mankind at right. the end of the rope. We believe in a hope. The hope that uh, you know we found, we offer it freely. Jordan has a lot of good things to say. I'm glad he came on the show. We don't agree with everything he said. We don't endorse everything he said, but we let him say it, you know, so... You know, if you're listening, everybody in the chat room was wanting to to hear him, you know, say if he believed, you know, that Christ really, you know, walked the earth or not or whatever. You know, I, w- I want to say this. Don't believe everything you hear from someone who, who sounds a little bit more intelligent when they speak it, just because you see it in a, a interview right. or you see it or you see it coming from behind a pulpit or you see it behind a lecture. Don't believe it as it's true. I could definitely say I fell into that trap of hearing all this stuff and thinking that, man, he's, he knows all this stuff. and blah, blah, blah. You know what? Jordan Maxwell is an awesome teacher. He has a lot of good stuff to say, but straight he's up. He's the same as anybody else at any other pulpit, man. Exactly. You know? He's off on a lot of things, and I think if we can agree to understand that and, and understand that nobody has everything all the way figured out, then I think we can take our, the pieces of our puzzle, which is why the show was created. That's why we gave him the platform, not to confuse anybody, but to really just put it out there and take your pieces of the puzzle, take some of his pieces, put it together until we can make some sense out of all of this. Right, and I think you're right on as far as what you're saying about, you know, with increased wisdom comes it's a burden, and that's the same, not just with Jordan, but you see William Cooper, Bobby Hammond, any of them other people who who come into this light and come start finding out all these different things that we don't see on the surface, like, wow, this is what's really going on that it is so overwhelming and, and it's such a burden. And the only thing that was really hurting me, and I mentioned it to you in, the ch- in our private chat, was I was like, man, you know what, I, I don't I don't watch TV, I don't watch the news, and my cousin was just telling me today about this whole Boston bombing and stuff. And I just, you know, put out a quick message on Facebook, like, look, man, y'all don't let this get you caught up in negativity and and anger and depression and all this, all these dark energies because... You know, it can do that, and but and and when I was listening to him talking, he he does have so much knowledge. But I was listening to him talking. It's almost like he paints this really hopeless picture that there's nothing anybody can do. There's you know, it's hopeless. And and the truth is, dude, there is hope. Love is the most high power, and and it can change anybody on an individual basis. And there's hope for any of us as individuals. You know, and we are in a very dark time collectively we definitely are but 
it's not hopeless for you or for me or for any of us individually and you know we got to stay positive we got to think we got to think positive yeah. man yeah i mean you know i mean it's the you know because this world is confusing babylon is is confusing this world there's i mean there's so much information there's so much knowledge out there and everyone claims to have the, the right doctrine and, and the right knowledge and things like that one of the brothers said in the chat room he said um we talk about this uh, wisdom and knowledge that gives you this this vexation of, of spirit and brings about confusion and and uh, marks you but there is a, a different type of of a uh, wisdom it's the wisdom of god and and wisdom uh, from him his his fresh word that he gives you his peace and christ said my peace i give you that no man can give you and no man can take it away it's a lot of people out there they have no hope that's why we see like stuff like we've seen today on you know on the news all these bombings and shootings and and all this stuff like that man it's like you know we gotta be a standard for some source of hope no matter what you believe no matter what type of esoteric doctrine or christian doctrine or whatever you believe because I, I really really don't care what you believe i really don't I believe in God, and I believe in Christ, and I believe that he, he loves you. I believe that he came to this earth, and he walked a perfect life, and he was put to death, and he died the death of a murderer, and he never killed anybody. He died the death of a thief, and he never stole anything, and that he died so that we can live, and that mankind is separated from God. All you got to do is turn the TV on and see that mankind is separated from God, and Christ came to bridge that gap between us and God. So, I mean, that's what Whether we have to offer. Whether you believe it or not. <laughs> yeah, I really, I really can care less. You did it for really. everybody, you know? Whether exactly. you want to believe it or not. Yeah, and, and it's there. It's it's there, and, and, and I, I could see that if, you know, it was just some people who believed it, man, but I've seen people's lives totally transformed by this, this gospel. I've seen people's lives, I've seen... Man, I've I've seen so much stuff, dude, that I've seen people who couldn't look you in the face because they were so demon oppressed and full of drugs and, 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 and all types of spirits and I've seen people lay hands on them and spirits leave their body and the and the people can look you in the eyes and hold a conversation and peace come into their in, in into their spirit and, and life breathe back into their body, man. So I know the power of the gospel and it's real. And there is these esoteric deeper meanings uh, behind the scriptures that you're not going to get in church. There's also the quite literal meanings that you're not going to get from Jordan Maxwell. That's just the simple truth. Yeah, man. I think that me and you are both, you know what I'm saying, it's not, it's not like we're just saying it out of head knowledge. We're saying that out of even our own personal experience, dude. No, I would be, I would be, I would be judged of God if I didn't tell you. That's the thing. Like, I, I would, I, I, I would miss an opportunity so I don't want it to seem like, okay, Jordan's off the phone. Now we're going to, you know, straighten up some things that he messed up or whatever the case is. If you listen to any of, of Jordan Maxwell's interviews when he's on other people's radio shows, he does bring about the uh, negative for with him. And a lot of people, they try to speak hope to him. They try to say, hey, the work you're doing is good. Keep up the good work. Keep up the good fight. You've inspired so many people to keep seeking past the mundane, to turn the television off and to seek the things of uh, you know of heaven or whatever and and if he has for you that's awesome man he you know he's inspired me to do a lot of great things but he he is not the know all and end all when it comes to knowledge and information i mean if you want to end up where he is right now it's not a, it's not a good place to be man i really appreciate his work and everything that he's done everything he's doing but um i think there's a little bit more to life yeah man i'm after that love and peace and power knowledge and mm -hmm. peace that surpasses all understanding so that's the thing is if you want to just go according to knowledge you know even if it's factual literal knowledge mm -hmm. that knowledge can drive you crazy bro and it doesn't seem to me like he got peace you know and and bible says that christ gives us a peace that surpasses all understanding that it's not even to the human comprehension that regardless mm -hmm. of all the negativity regardless of all the evil regardless of all that that we're surrounded by, we can still have peace, you know, and that's what gets me through the day, man. Yeah, 
And that's the thing, man, because there's a lot of people, man, dealing with this type of stuff. It's some crazy oh, it drove people. me crazy. Like, it's, it, listen, it, it, but see, here's the thing. There's crazy people. There's just people. It it really has nothing to do with a religion or a movement because there's some crazy people in the New Age movement. There's crazy people in the occult field. True. They're Christian. out there. There's some I get Exactly, but it transcends that. It's crazy Christian people. It's crazy Islamic people, Buddhist people. It's just people in in general. So it's not like you can't take something like that and and, and group it to that religion or that belief system because it transcends that. Man, it's that sin nature. It's the lack of understanding. You know, it's the it's the lack of tolerance as well, man. That pushes people, you know, to these edges. You know, uh, we can touch on next week's show, man. If you want to kind of talk about what's going to go on next week. Yeah, man. Well, I just want to say I'm, I'm super relieved. I feel super a lot better, man, now that we just got to kind of like share a little bit, kind of just counterbalance <laughs> it a little bit because, man, I was feeling like, man, I really don't want to end yeah. it. Just end it on that and just no. leave people kind of feeling hopeless out there. You know, like this is what yeah. it is and there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. You know, yeah, but, yeah. but yeah, man, I'm I'm really excited to get to to get to share with you guys next week about Man, my life story, because I've been on one hell of a ride, dude, and I've been through all them depths. I've been through darkness and loving it, darkness and evil and addiction and and just wallowing in it. And uh, all the way back out to the other side, dude, through the supernatural and through coming into supernatural wisdom and knowledge and, and letting that come alive inside of me, that light and love and peace that I'm talking about, and totally transform me, just like you were saying, and yeah. to where it's, I'm affecting the world, dude. I'm affecting other countries. I'm affecting people all over the U.S. with my yeah. words and my actions and my life as an example. And and that's a, that is for everybody. You know, it's a universal thing. It has nothing to do with me or you as an individual. We're just blessed to have been able to come into that experience. And I'm yeah. uh, I'm planning on giving my testimony next week, bro, in a, in a way that I haven't given it before. And opening mm-hmm. up and sharing some stuff that I've never told anybody and I'm kind of mm-hmm. at that point. I mean, you're, if, if if Christ transforms you and Christ heals you and, and turns everything bad into something good, you should be able to share that and hope that it that it touches other people, you know, and that yeah. that it gives a light and a hope for them. So I'm hoping that next week yeah. um, I can do that for some people. All right. Definitely looking forward to hearing that. We got a couple more people in the chat room. I'm gonna bring Matt. I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you in. <laughs> Somebody wants to hear your testimony now. You got to tune in next week. <laughs> um, I'll, hey Matt, I'm gonna bring you in in a minute and do what you said. Pray over uh, Jordan. Somebody's been on the line holding guest 34. Are you listening to the show? Did you have a question or what's up? Hey man, uh, yeah, I've been kind of like seeing your Facebook uh, posts on these uh, chats, and uh, I'm kind of new to uh, you know the life of Christ. Mm-hmm. And just listening to all these things, it's really interesting, all these testimonies, man. I'm, um, you know, just living day by day, you know, reading the word and just trying to do good and be a better person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of good that you cleared up what uh, yeah, um, like I was talking about. It wasn't really, wasn't really yeah. the truth. You know, it's not my, you know, not the word of God. And it's mm-hmm. very negative. And, you know, God is love. Yeah. God is positivity yeah. we got to be the shining light in the darkness which is the world yeah, yeah but, you know, i'm enjoying listening to the show man Just that's what's good. up man thanks for calling yeah so i mean there is a lot of truth to what he's saying because there is i mean yeah. you you gotta you, i mean you gotta understand that darkness out there obviously this world is dark you know the scriptures even say that the whole world is under the you know the guise of the wicked one And, you know, even in Job, it says that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. And I think Jordan's just kind of pointing that stuff out, man, and just showing you, yeah, it's deeper. And once you think you have it figured out, it's deeper than you even know. Once we can see the darkness, then the light of of Christ shines for itself because he is the light of the world. You know, he is the peace, he is the rest, and he is the the truth in the midst of all that confusion. Yeah, I mean, uh, there, there is darkness, and he did point it out, I mean, there's Oh, oh yeah, an hour and a half now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but you know, the the one thing we got to focus on is just our our path, man, our walk with Christ. Just yeah. you know, we can't live our lives the way we want it. It's on an individual know, basis. We, That's we, we murder our flesh. Control over. We we murder mm-hmm. our flesh every day, 
and we don't. Mhm. Just. Yeah, that, that's true, man. Yeah, what's your name, man? My name is Manuel, and I'm uh, calling from uh, New Mexico. Okay. Sweet. That's what's up, man. I'm gonna um, I'm gonna bring Mr. Matthew back on the line. Right, Matthew. Right. Well, thanks for the call. Yeah, yeah, man. No problem, dude. You there, Matt? Uh, yeah. Hey. So, do you have anything to say after that? I know you wanna, you know, speak, you know, speak a word over him, but um, anything, kind of. Uh, nothing specific. Uh, yeah. All my other questions are, or comments are for him, and yeah, no, it's too long to get into now. Yeah, that's fine. But uh, you mind if I say a blessing right now? Yeah, go ahead, man. All right. Once again, I apologize. I have coffee brain right now, but either way, he'll get one. <laughs> so. Yeah. All right. Um, Father in heaven, we come to you today in the name of your son, Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus Christ, and we ask you to... Well, first off, we come and we thank you for the enormous, enormous blessing that Jordan Maxwell has been on in our lives and in the collective world. We thank you for all the information he's revealed, the truth that he has brought forth, and the wisdom that you have trained him up in. And we just pray that you would continue to to shine your light upon him and to give him more increased measures of wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and light, and that you would uh, just bring him to the fullness of the realization of Christ and the fullness of um, of who Yeshua was and his physical incarnation. We pray that you would liberate him from everything that is um, holding him down and the uh, the barriers that are keeping him from this truth. We pray that you would continue to open his eyes and that you would, you would pour new favor and blessing into his life from unexpected areas and that you would help uh, build him up again when the time is right and that you would give him money, place to stay, car, everything that he needs. Uh, we pray that that would all shadow in comparison to everything that he truly needs, which is the fullness of your glory and your son. And we pray that you would just continue to, to unlock higher amounts and realms of light within his mind with his entire within his entire being and uh once again we just thank you for the blessing that he has been in our lives and thank you for the blessing that Derek has been in my life and everyone else who has tuned in and we pray that you continue to do a mighty work through him pray this all in your son's name amen amen appreciate it man yeah so you know anybody listening man however this podcast goes out if you're dealing with confusion, if you have questions and you know about life in general, spiritual problems, whatever the case is, contact one of us on Facebook. You can contact myself through uh, facebook.com backslash truth seeker, truth S E E K A H. And uh, Dan, you want to give out your information? Yeah, you can get me at facebook.com backslash MBK International. MBK International. And um, if you have any questions about the Bible, about life in, in general, or you just need somebody to talk to, we a couple just regular guys who are there who are trying to figure this thing out, you know, with you. So, you know, hit us up anytime, man. We, you know what I'm saying? We'd love to talk to you. We'd love to pray with you, uh, whatever the case is. So thanks for tuning in to the show. We will be back next week to hear uh, Dan's testimony, uh, some powerful stuff, man. And um, I guess we'll see you guys next week. Uh, peace and shalom. Peace. And um, I want to say a big shalom, shalom out to Brother P, was in the <laughs> house holding it down, holding his holding his uh, prophet staff in the video. Shots out, man! Thanks for holding me down, brother. Peace. If you want to support the show, today's podcast is brought to you by Audible.com. With over 180,000 titles to choose from for your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player, you can get a free audiobook download and 30-day free trial. By using any computer to go to audibletrial.com/tmp.